morning dear friends and welcome to this holy mass of sunday the 15 week in ordinary time into this mass god invites us as co-workers in his fan and so we pray that we may be good workers in god's farmland in this mass i'll pray for all of you I pray for the grace you are asking for God from God today. I ask God's special blessing for you, for your life, and for your loved ones. I pray in this Mass too for those who are sick, especially those who have asked prayers at this time. I pray for dear friends of mine who are sick, a husband and a wife down with coronavirus. Pray also for their children who are awaiting their results. Pray that God may watch about them and that God may heal them. Pray for others who are in critical care. Ask God's special favors for all of those patients. And pray for doctors and nurses who continually stress themselves around the world for the healing of God's children. I pray for those who are struggling with their marriages and their families are in crisis. Those who are without jobs, those who are afraid their businesses might go down, that God may offer fresh lights, fresh imagination as they look down and look forward. I pray for Josephine Catherine who passed away a few days ago. Pray and ask that God may grant her rest and that God may bring comfort and strength to her family. And I'll invite you to bring all of your prayers and all of your intentions and let us pray together. I don't forget to offer this mass too for people who have birthdays and anniversaries today. Our opening hymn today will be, I am the holy vine. I am the holy vine. I am the holy vine, which God my father tends, each branch that is no fruit, my father cuts away. Each fruit, full branch he prunes with care to make it yield abundant fruit. I am the holy vine which God my Father tends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are blessed today, and I'm super excited to have this opportunity to celebrate with you and to pray with you and to share God's special favors on this beautiful day. We will pray for the intentions we have, but I'll allow you now to bring your intentions if you're just joining us. Bring your intentions, just place them up on this altar. And from this altar, we will offer them like incense to God's altar in heaven. To prepare ourselves worthily for this mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. 
for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted, accounted as Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the gospel and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down and will not return until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which it is sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Those have prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clots, softening its showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with bounty, and your paths overflow with rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing floods the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the suffering of this present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation, the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself will be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We also groan within ourselves as we await our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Christ is a soul. All who come to him will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Some large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, 
some seed fell on the pot, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because of this because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, dear friends, and or good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. I hope that on this 15th Sunday in ordinary time, you are beginning to feel the blessing of God or the hope that inspires, that his word inspires in us, in, in spite of everything else that um, our eyes see. Every day when I look around the world, I am reminded of what Paul said, we live by faith, not by sight. And I say that, um, I say that strongly. Because if I live by sight, there is enough that I see around the world. There is enough that I hear around the world. There is enough I feel about the world that should make me depressed, be frustrated, be fearful, and just quit. But if you live by, by faith, you recognize that there is a power, not just in you, but there's also a power that is at work right now in the world that will turn things around. Not for everyone, I will say that not for everyone, but for those who are willing to not quit, for those who are willing to stay the course, for those who are willing to believe even when others seem to give up. So that is something that keeps me going every day. That's something that gives, keeps, helps me maintain my sense of sanity every day, in spite of the horror of human suffering that you encounter at every moment. You realize God still has a plan in this world. So today I'm going to invite you to reflect with me on the readings, especially the first reading and the gospel reading. Today we hear God speak of himself or the Lord Jesus speak of himself as a farmer, a sower. And that is important. But before then, this is what the Bible said. That just as the rains, just as, just as the heavens or from heaven, the rain and the snow come down and do not return till they have watered the earth. So when God allows rain for us, it doesn't go back until it has done its purpose. Yeah, it ultimately at some point, yeah, it goes back through the whole process of evaporation. It goes back, but it does its job. And I, I was thinking about that power that God has. He sends down rain, and rain does its job. And I'm thinking about the power God gave us as human beings. And sometimes we underestimate that power. The reason why only man, and when I mean man, I'm not talking about just man, I'm talking about generic sense of only humans are created in the image and likeness of God. And God entrusted to us super abundant authority and power to do the unimaginable, to do the, impo the, the impossible. We, we have our power. And it's in that sense that I would like us to reflect on the gospel. That we too have power, like God has, because God gave us. Yeah, God has power to do all things. We have power to do most things, or do a lot of things. Think about it. All right. Of all creatures on earth, no one has learned no other creature 
unless created by God in that way, has learned to live in an environment different than its natural environment. A fish can only live inside water unless it is one that can live also outside for some time. And land animals cannot live on land. They cannot live in water. And no animal has learned to build a house unless doing it the way it has been done forever. Only humans do things that were never done before. The house I live on today or the house you live on today, think about it. A thousand years, a thousand years ago or maybe two thousand years ago, the nature, that house was not imaginable to our parents and our grandparents. Two thousand years ago, no one thought that flying was ever going to be possible. Today we fly like birds. We're able to do impossible and imaginable things. That's the power God gave us to harness the world and to make it work for us. And sometimes we forget that what we do, what we do would ultimately have consequences and what we do does matter. And so, so like God, we are able to say something to give, to give, to, to speak out something and it happens. That power was given us by God. We speak something. Think about an idea. You have it in your brain. You figure it all out. The moment you let it out, it's something else. You're able to create something unimaginable. That's the power, not just of the human intellect, but that's the power of the spiritual capacities God infused in us. And those powers are still latent and still there in every one of us. And so it is in that sense that I want you to reflect on yourself and on your place in the world. Scripture in the gospel tells us that the sower went to sow. Now I know traditionally we have interpreted this only with the interpretation Jesus gave us, which is Jesus is the sower we are the seed uh, sorry his word is the seed and we are the land and all that kind of um, but that's not what i want to reflect on today because i want to take this a step further now jesus is not just sowing alone because scripture tells us when you read first corinthians chapter 3 if you read verse 6 verse 7 and verse, verse 6 verse 8 verse 9 first Paul says that he has, has planted and Apollo has water and someone else will reap the benefits. That means no one person is doing everything. Similarly, Jesus doesn't farm alone. He is not the only one person who is a farmer or the sower. He also got in the first moment 12 guys who were going to work with him. And those 12 had others. And it has been like that forever. So, so technically, if you read that same text, if you read verse 8 and verse 9, Scripture tells us that we are co-workers with God. We are co-workers with God. That means we are co-farmers. Yeah, we are not a landowner. God is a landowner. But we are co-workers in that farm. That means on us is entrusted the job or the duty of sowing seeds, of sowing seeds for the harvest. Now, if you live in Africa, I'm not talking about sowing seeds where you go give money to the pastor, all right, hoping that God is going to bless you in some way. That's not what I'm talking about. Sowing seed is investing in building of the kingdom of God and recognizing your place in that farmland where what your, your the nature of your land, your farmland is. If you are a teacher, schooling, education is your farmland. And the children, the children of God, children of God are the beneficiaries of your ministry. So the question is, what seed are you planting in those children? What seed? If you are a teacher, I want you to think about it. What seed are you planting? Because in that place, you are the teacher. You are the sower. 
You're there to sow seed. Seed meant to establish and to build and to strengthen God's kingdom. What kind of farmer are you? What kind of seed are you sowing? Now, if you are a husband, yes, your family or a mom or a wife, your family is your land, is your place of work. And it's important. Or if you are a child, your family, that space, depending on where you are. Now, we may have different farmlands at different times because we wear different caps. But whatever it is you do, as a husband, remember that in your family, you are sowing some seed on your wife, on your children, and on everyone else that you have opportunity or have influence on. You are the sower. And the question you want to ask yourself, what nature of children am I breeding? What nature of discipline am I giving them? What kind of training am I impacting on them? What nature of harvest do I hope to receive? Now, those are all questions we must ask ourselves because we have made co-workers, co-creators with Almighty God. We are not just the land now. We are workers on the land. That's how I want us to understand this parable at the second level. Not just the first level where Jesus is walking alone. Now he has entrusted, first of all, he has trusted me. Trusted me and calling me to serve in this ministry. If you are a minister, a priest or any kind of thing, ask yourself, what kind of sower, what kind of farmer are you? How are you so, what kind of, what kind of um, message do you sow on those who listen to you? How do you encourage, inspire, or bring up people who are looking up to you? So every one of us, whatever you are, if you are a medical worker, the day you each time you step into that place, realize that you are a soul. How you walk, what you do, will tell others will make others either feel better or feel worse or be drained of their sense of self or be infused with a very a greater sense of their own identity so in whatever thing you do if you are a politician a public worker whatever you do today i want you to see yourself as a soul and each time you step into your place of work you want to find out what kind of worker am i today what do I hope to sow in God's farm today? Because that farm is not mine. Yes, Paul says, we are co-workers in God's farm. The farm is not mine. Yes, I'm an employee of God who is going to evaluate me based on my, my output or my input. He's going to evaluate me based on what I'm bringing to make this farm healthier, better. Now, even if you are renting God's, renting a space, it's important to ask yourself, how am I treating this space that I'm renting right now? Those are all questions that we must ask ourselves. Because we seem to have thrown away everything to God to do all. And, and, and forgetting our role in trying to make God's business and God's family and God's church grow. I will use the church as God's family. There are so many workers in God's church. To, today we seem to have left the work only to the priests and to the ministers and to the deacons. We forget that we are part of this establishment. I, I want you today to define for yourself what is your role as a member of the church because Paul has another analogy that is so 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 at he says the church is a body of christ and we are all its members that means every member has a role in that farm every member has a role in that place i want to ask you today how do you define your own role in this church and ask yourself what kind of a farmer have i been what kind of a sower have i been in this church do you just put the list and seek to get the most out of it? 
Is the church better because of you or worse because of you? Because ultimately, there will either be no harvest or poor harvest or rich harvest. In the first three instances, the seed, first, it didn't even germinate because the birds just ate it up. Second, yeah, it did germinate, but the sun scorched it. Third, it germinated, but it was choked. Fourth, there was some level of production, and it was 30, then 60, then 100. Today, I want you, whatever you do for a living, even if you don't have a job right now, you do have a fan line. I want you to identify, the first thing I want to do today, from this day, identify how many farmlands you're working in. And ask yourself, what kind of a sower would you, ought you to be in each of these farmlands? What kind of a sower ought you to be in each of these farmlands? And then evaluate yourself. Have you been that kind of sower that you should be in each of those farmlands. Now there is still time. Scripture says, those who have ears to hear ought to hear this. So if you have ears to hear, that means you need to hear that if I am not doing well, well, I'm going to be evaluated based on what I brought in. There is no grace. There is no abundant grace. There is grace right now to redo. There is grace right now to recalibrate, there is grace right now to re-evaluate, there is grace right now to reposition, there is grace right now to re-engage to reinvest. now that grace is only going to be available as long as I am living, as a living person, as you are a living person and I hope that we are able to take that grace right now right today and begin to think about how to improve whatever farm land God has given to us don't sit down there and complaining. Well, there's no water, there's no water in this farmland. You go seek water and water your farmland. If you look, you're gonna see very quickly that God will provide water for you to bless your farmland. If you look carefully, you're gonna see God will provide an opportunity for you to make some improvements, for you to make some gains. But you must first identify what is your farmland, how many farmlands do you have? What kind of worker ought you to be in that farmland to make the most of it? What kind of seed have you been sowing? And how could you do better? Now, if you can make that simple analysis of your, of your position on earth and in life, I promise you, very, very soon, you will stop looking at what is impossible and begin to see what is possible. You will stop looking at your failures and begin to see your, or your weaknesses and begin to see your strength. You will begin to, you will stop looking at all the things that you have failed and begin to see at the things that you can, you can, you can be victorious on. Suddenly, you will begin to see through God's eyes when you surrender and begin to live as God has called you to. Remember that you have power. What Isaiah told us is also true of you, that you have power. And your power means that you can not just say something and have it happen, that what you even invest on, if you invest on it as it should be, there is going to be results. God says, my word doesn't come down without doing its job. If you and I begin to be the sower that we ought to be, there is going to be results. We cannot invest in vain. God will bless our effort. God will bless our sweat. God will bless our hard work. And I know there will be great results. I pray, dear friends, that whether you are a mother, whether you are a father, a daughter, a child, a teacher, a nurse, a priest, whether you have a business, whatever it is that you do, a nurse, a police officer, whatever that you do, today, take the time and evaluate yourself. What kind of a worker are you? What kind of seeds have you been sown? And I pray that as you go through this entire process, you may begin to see through God's eyes that the Spirit of God may begin to lead you 
to where and how you can improve and make the most of that farmland. That you stop fearing what the future holds and start building a future for yourself because God is giving you power and authority. You are walking in God's plan and you're not walking alone. God is walking with you. Paul said, we are co-workers. As co-workers, you're not walking alone. You're walking with God. But you must identify how best you can be as a worker. So always I'd like to remind you that you are still and forever the delight of the Almighty God. And I pray God's blessings on you today and forever. Especially now as you go back to invest in the farm land God is given to you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in kind of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ teaches us through parables. Christ is a sower of the seed. He has enlisted us as fellow sowers, as co-sowers of God's seed in God's fire. Let us respond to his work by praying to our Father for grace to do our work. That the church in the world today may be like the rich soil yielding a harvest of a hundredfold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nation leaders of our church, local leaders, and leaders at every level of human interaction will govern in a way that is accountable to God and to all of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are plagued by doubt or suffering people who are plagued by, by sickness and disease, plagued by poverty and lack, plagued by loneliness and suicidal thoughts, that they may receive the comfort and healing mercies of God to convert your heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. That those who are close to death, especially people that we know, those suffering from this coronavirus, people in critical care, who may die today or may die in the next few days, that they may receive the forgiveness of God and a faith that helps them overcome their fears and find inner peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers. Pray for those whose families are in tumult. Pray for those whose businesses are in crisis. Pray for those who are without employment. Pray for those who find it hard to find hope at this time. Those who are despairing. Pray for those who are grieving, especially people whose spouses 
or whose children or parents have passed at this time. Pray for those in jail, those often forgotten, sinners who live alone. Pray for all those who are unable to live their lives because someone or something has happened in their lives. Pray for those who have birthdays today or anniversaries. Pray and ask that all of these people may receive God's graces in accordance with their special and specific needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, especially Josephine Carton, who passed away a few days ago, that God may grant our rest and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of him. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your graces always achieve their purposes. As we make this request in prayer, teach us to value your business and your blessings and help us to invest every day in the path that you have called us into. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made you to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, and as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness in them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and killing for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
It will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Josephine Catherine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with you in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to the co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace I may be in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, from me to all of you, May God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be clean. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. For all those who are still unable to attend Mass and receive the Eucharist, let us pray for the grace of spiritual communion. O oh God, your grace is given freely and it never returns to you that it sent to accomplish the work in the life of your people. Today, as your children, sons and daughters around the world, continue to desire, continue to seek, continue to yearn, for a day when they can reconnect with you again physically. We ask, O oh God, that you may lavishly nourish and bless their lives with the grace of spiritual communion. May the effect of this sacrament be felt in every area and aspect of their lives, O oh God. May they find renewal, may they find refreshment, 
the refined feeling. We ask all of this through the same Christ. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this ministry, its saving effect upon us may grow ever, may ever increase and grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl through all the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and worshiping God on this beautiful day with us. Pray that God, who is rich, abundantly rich in mercy and kindness and compassion, may bless you in every good way. Pray that you may recognize your role in life, your place in God's farm, and just do well in that place. And if you do, I promise you, it won't be long. God is going to take you places you never dreamt of, you never imagined. Our God is faithful. He keeps his promises if we do our part. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be the summons. Will you come and follow me if I call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I get cold? Should your life for truck to scare, will you let me answer prayer in you and you?